Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost. <laughs> Peekaboo. I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2021, the album, Dad AF. <clears throat> <clears throat> Rock on, gold dust woman! Boost! Alright, let's get into this video today. Today we're going to talk about David Dobrik's, uh, I don't even know what, to, oh my god, you guys. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about David Dobrik's apology video. I'm like, <sighs> I, uh, my plan today had been to make, I, I'm just, I am, to be honest with you, this whole situation is so sad and so sick and so played out um, in the context of social media that uh, what is really happening in 2021 is that uh, Twitter, YouTube, social media is becoming the judge and jury. Um, instead of these things being handled in the appropriate situations and the appropriate uh, avenues that they should be happening in. So the whole situation makes me very, very sad um, for the people that were hurt as a result of the actions um, by David Dobrik, who is the leader of the vlog squad, because I see a lot of people excusing David Dobrik um, out of this whole situation and saying, you know, um, well, we should be focusing our attention on Dom. We should be focusing our attention on David Dobrik. And while I do think that a lot of attention needs to be focused on Dom and the other people that are more complicit in this situation, David Dobrik was the one that was in charge of the vlog squad. He was the one that was putting these videos up. He was the one that was behind all of this. He was literally the ringmaster of the circus, okay? Um, and, and that's very, very important when you talk about the power component of all of this. And I was just sitting down and I was watching um, a little bit of the, the live front of me that Trisha and Ethan Klein are doing right now to talk about the apology video. Um, and I had said in my video yesterday that I was going to watch the front of me, uh, the, the, the podcast, and then I was going to do a video today. My plan had been to do that or I was going to do that for tomorrow and then today I was actually going to do um, a Jeffree Star video that was going to be a little bit more lighthearted because that's what I like to do on my channel. I like to do lighthearted videos that make people laugh and make people, you know, I don't know, uh, just escape from their day. And to me, talking about all of this isn't something where we are escaping from things. But I think it's important to have this conversation. Conversation. I think this conversation needs to be had from many different points of view and I think that um, and this is going to be a video where I am sharing my opinion and um, as I said in my video yesterday often I don't do that in, in situations that for me seem very serious I often kind of stand back and read comments and I try to do it um, you know uh, in um, I don't know, maybe a, a way that's more fitting for me. But after I saw this apology video last night, I was like, okay, this is the most pathetic excuse for any kind of response to what is going on right now. And I said in my video yesterday that David Dobrik would not get up on video. And I'm floored he actually did it. Um, and to me, the only reason that he did it is because this man is so filled with arrogance, ego, and pride that he couldn't stay away from getting on camera and having to ad address people and take the power back. And this is, a, I think, when you step back and you look at this situation, it's a situation that is really about power and control. Um, and really, uh, I think, emotional manipulation. And I think when you start looking at the, the figures that are to play over time, okay, not just the David Dobricks, but the Shane Dawson's and the Jeffree Stars and the James Charles and these people, these are all people that are completely ate up with ego pride and um, arrogance and cockiness to the point where they use their emotional manipulation to manipulate their audience to believe what they want them to believe or hear what they want them to hear. And so you have to go into watching these videos knowing that. You just can't go into watching these videos as, I'm a stand of this person and I love this person and, and I'm going to just listen to what they have to say with an open heart. They're sitting behind a camera, okay? They are sitting there editing a video. I mean, you have to think about this from this point of view, right? Um, and 
I was gonna give a little birthday shout out, so I wanna do this really quick. Meg sh told me that it was her birthday today, and she said she was not asking for a birthday shout out, but just because I think it's so important to highlight something positive today, I wanna say, Meg, I hope you have the most amazing birthday in the entire world. Okay, back to the video. Um, when you're watching this video, so I watched the David Dobrik video last night, um, and, and I think the thing that is bothersome for me is when I was reading the comments underneath the video. So the video, um, first of all, is very, very, very um, contrived in its title. The title is simply um, 32221, okay? Now, he knows he can't come out and put a video up saying, I'm sorry. He can't come out and say a video, we need to talk, because he did that. So what does he do? He has to title the video something, right? So he titles it just simply, The Date. Well, it's a very contrived title, right? Because it's like, he, he wants you to think he's not even thinking really much about the title. He's just gonna, he's just gonna title it The Date, okay? It's extremely contrived to me. Then you think about this man that wants to say to you, I, I've said this, and I don't know how many videos I've said this. I don't understand why these people can't just literally reach over, start the camera, and talk to their audience, okay? So he says at the beginning of it, I just want to talk to you guys. I'm and he basically reaches over and just starts it and says, he's sitting on the floor in front of a couch like this, whatever. Um, and he says, I just want to talk to you, okay? The problem is with this, the amount of jump cuts that are in this video, you have to remember those jump cuts didn't just occur. He sat down at a computer. He uploaded the video. He watched the video back. He inserted the jump cuts where he wanted them to be. One of them is so deliberate that it is at the moment that he begins to cry and he cuts it out because what he wants you to think is, okay, what is going on in David Dobrik's head at that moment that he is so emotionally distraught? And th this, the emotional manipulation that I felt watching this video, I was like, I mean, honest to God, I was like, you know, if you had asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, okay, this is a young guy that power and control just took over his group of friends and they made horrific decisions and choices, okay? And I didn't know a lot about David Dobrik two weeks ago. I know a lot about David Dobrik now. If you had asked me a week ago, I would have said, this is a very smart man that knows what he's doing, okay? He knows the choices and whatever. When I watched this video yesterday, the level of emotional manipulation that I witnessed in this video is probably on a scale of grandiosity that I have never witnessed in a YouTube video before. It's very, very scary. It, it, it's, it's scary, you guys, okay? Because the fact that he would put a jump cut right at a moment where he begins to start crying, so if the audience witnesses his emotion, emotionality and then wonder what is going on in his mind to bring him to that point, at the point that he is talking about, okay, the people who suffered as a result of the choices that all these people in his group made, and then he cuts and starts going to something else, it is really scary, you guys. Like, I mean, he's he's really thinking this through. Um, and that, to me, is almost scarier than the lack of accountability, the lack of action, on and on and on, okay? The other thing that's really sad to me is that when you go and you look at this video, the video is dated, or titled, 32221, okay? It has currently... 4.2 million views on it, and it is sitting at 431,000 likes and 22,000 dislikes. That means that 431,000 people bought into what David Dobrik said in this video, all right? Or accepted his apology. On the heels of me talking about jump cuts, my battery died and I had to replace my battery. Um, the other thing I wanted to say on here that's really, really scary to me is that this video that is currently sitting at 4.2 million views less than 24 hours after it's been uploaded has 431,000 likes and 22,000 dislikes, okay? What's scary about that to me is that that means that 431,000 people have approved this video, have accepted David Dobrik's apology. And when you read in the comment sections and you see people that are saying things like, oh, David, I love you anyway. Don't worry about it. Thank you for your apology. This is so sincere. This is so genuine. I have to ask the question, are you accepting his apology on behalf of the people that were affected? Are you accepting his, be his apology on behalf of the women that were affected? And is it your place to accept that apology? If if not, you probably shouldn't be hitting the like or dislike button. I'm just saying, okay? Um, you know, I, I think that we have to remember the people that were truly affected by this. And and that's 
really sad to me that that's all being very missed in this whole situation, you know? And there are a lot of top comments that address that. But when you go through here, you guys, I mean, there's a lot of comments underneath there. Um, like the top comment on here, hold on a second. I want to make sure I, this, this is correct before I, oh, no, 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 wait a second. That was the newest comment. The top comment underneath the video said, the top comment underneath the video says, imagine at the end he goes, so overall I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring this video because SeatGeek just dropped David Dobrik, okay? SeatGeek is no longer sponsoring David Dobrik. The top comment on David Dobrik's apology, okay, to the people that suffered the most as a result of this, is a funny comment. I mean, we think that's appropriate in 2021, right? And when you go under there and you read it, then it's a lot of other people that are making joking comments too. Oh, he's sitting on the floor. He's doing a Trisha Paytas apology and things like that. You know, I don't know that I think that this is the time that we make those kind of jokes. And I think that part of what's happening, and I think that this is really what's, what's very sad to me, Especially as a 48-year-old man, I almost said 41, I wish, 48-year-old man that has witnessed a lot of change in the world. And I've seen a lot of things go three steps forward and two steps back. And this is a situation where I see us going five steps forward, four steps back, ten steps back, okay? Because what's starting to happen on with YouTubers and social media and things like that is that, like I said, we are becoming a judge and jury. We are the ones that are saying on social media, on Twitter, we're typing in 144 characters our acceptance of somebody else's apology. We're typing in in less than 144 characters or the comment on a YouTube video whether we think they are okay. It's not about cancel culture anymore, okay? I mean, I think we're so far back past that. We want to talk about cancel culture and we want to talk about you know should this person be deplatformed or whatever and I'm not ever going to get in a video and say what I think about that okay I, I think that's a decision that somebody needs to make on their own right but what's really scary to me about that is that these are very very situation very serious situations you know I was thinking about this today how sad this was to me you know and um, so my husband and I were coming back to the hotel in an Uber and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to this video, this apology video, and I'm like, I can't believe this, you know? And I think about three years ago, Manny and UA and Laura Lee, um, you know, were highly scrutinized and rightfully so at that time for some things that happened. And they lost, you know, just hundreds of thousands of followers. And they really, really had a hard time, you know, coming back from that. And I'm just using them as an example because there, and there have been a lot of YouTubers that have suffered because of choices that they've made in their past and currently, okay? And, you know, it took a long time for them through action to show that they had really become changed people. And I do believe today that Laura Lee and Manny MUA are changed people, okay? Um, and I think that they've shown that through action. But their numbers suffered greatly for years and years and years. They didn't get sponsorships. They were dropped from companies, you know, and things like that. And we're talking about situations that like with Manny and UA, it was a situation where somebody just said he was a bad friend. You know, here we are, flash forward three years later, and we have serious allegations, you know, regarding a lot of these people. And it's like, you're sitting at 400 and what, 31,000 people that are approving of that? And these people really aren't losing subscribers. And I was watching, you know, like James Charles, you know, is another one I mentioned in my video the other day. It's like, there's no, like, really accountability there whatsoever, you know? And it's really the audience that is saying at this point, you know? And depending on the age that you are on YouTube and the age of your audience, then that's the age of your judge and jury. So really, it is an, a, a, a jury of your peers. It really is. Well, imagine James Charles. His jury is about 16 years old, okay? So, you know, like, when we're sitting here and we're watching all this stuff go down, this very serious stuff, life-ruining life kind of stuff, you know? It makes me just so sad about the condition of the world that we're sitting in here today and it's just such a you know cover your ass kind of point of view and um you know like i i, I think you know first of all the jump cut situation i don't understand why you want to get in a video and you want to talk about i'm going to make an apology i just want to talk to my people okay fine don't put any jump cuts in. The reality is, if the overall video that took you to film was two hours long, upload a two-hour apology and let people listen to you ramble. Let people listen to what you really have to say from your heart, okay? Because then there's no editing of that. Like, I, 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 and I think the thing that's hard for me is 
Like when you go to make an apology to a friend, and if you and I'm gonna talk about the I'm sorry's in a second because the I'm sorry's drove me crazy in this video, okay? Um, you know, the thing for me is if you have ever made like an apology or an amends to a friend or a family member, do you sit down and jump cut that or do you just speak to them face to face because you're so upset about how you have hurt or affected that person that you want to make it right, okay? Not just in your words, but in your actions as well, correct? So that apology wouldn't be jump cutted. So I don't understand why all of these apology videos need to be jump cutted. And you know, it's interesting because Trisha Paytas, she actually put something out exactly like this. And she said, hold on a second, I want to make sure that I got her quote right. She said, stop editing apologies. Why so many jump cuts? And somebody underneath here said, and the comments were really, uh, they were really mixed. And someone said, so manipulative. He wanted to work up tears and then act like he edited it out so that people didn't accuse him of doing it for sympathy. But that's literally what he was doing by leaving just enough of the clip in so people could see the tears starting. He knows what he's doing. And somebody said, um, his apology seemed genuine and straight from the heart. Um, and he's trying to actually learn and grow from this. How do you know that? How do you know that he's trying to learn and grow from this in a week. Um, I, I think that any of us that have gone through like any kind of like major life change, done inventory, worked in counseling, you know, worth a counselor and, and, and had to like work through really deep issues. You don't really have that realization within a week. You really don't. Okay. And I'm calling BS on that. I'm sorry. Anybody that's worked through any, some tough issues in your life and really had to come to some realizations about yourself and said to yourself, looking in the mirror, maybe I'm not who I thought I was. You know, maybe I had no clue who I was at that time. Maybe I was making some asinine choices and maybe I need to take a real look at who I was and how I got there. That doesn't occur in a week. So when you want to sit there and talk about somebody making genuine, like change over two or three days, no. This apology video came out because David Dobrik is quickly losing everything that he has. He's losing all of his money. He's losing all of his subscribers. He's losing all of his sponsors. He's losing everything that he has right now and he is scared to death, okay? So, I watched this video. Well, there were other comments on here as well. Someone said, uh, you know, when are we going to start calling out Dom more? More people, a ton of people are saying that, right? And I agree with that. I think that it, it's not a one or more. That It's not one or the other. Why not both? Like, why aren't both people? Be, I mean, David Dobrik is the one that, like, I mean, and, you know, people are talking about him being in that picture and on and on and on. And it's like, okay, why aren't both people being held to accountability? It's... Oh my God, it's just, it's maddening to me, right? It's like, well, this person did less of this and it's just, it's, it's upsetting to me. So I watched this apology video. I watched it twice. I watched it once, like I said, in the Uber and then once when I got back. And um, what's interesting to me is that David Dobrik got into a video, what, just two days ago? Or no, to the, the day before. And he said, um, you know, like, let's talk. I need to talk to you. And this was like a big joke that he, you know, called it that and whatever. And what happened was the video failed. Okay? The video was horrible and he knows that. So he gets in the video and he says, I'm not going to take down the video. This is where this is where the, the genius of David Dobrik and the manipulation comes into play. Okay? So he says, I'm not going to take down the video. All right? So he's going to leave it up there because he knows if he takes it down, he's going to get a lot of crap. So he has to address it. So he already knows... What your questions are so he addresses them right there it's like if you go watch my video that i said the other day that people said they're calling it an apology video they're still calling it an apology video it's not an apology video that was a pr video okay that was a pr video to say prepare yourselves because i'm going to delete videos prepare yourselves because more is to come of what you're going to see behind the scenes right but i said in my video i didn't think he was going to get in a video and make an apology because he couldn't okay and i i still to the this sitting right here i think it was the worst move that david dobrik could have made it may save his career, but this is the problem that people don't think about, okay? And this is where I think, like, a lot of what I say when I say about, like, I want the best for people, and I want people to grow, and I want people to change and evolve and become the best versions of themselves. I want that for me. I want that for you. I want that for everybody out there, okay? I really, really do. But this is what I think these influencers don't understand, right? So you get in a video and the first video screws up, okay? And it doesn't hit the mark where you want it to. So what do you do after you lo lost all these sponsors? You sit down in another video and you go, hey guys, like I really wanna talk to you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this person, I'm sorry to that person. I'm sorry to this person, I'm sorry to that person. I'm sorry to this person, right? And you say all these sorries, okay? Which 
it's interesting to me because in the last video what he said was that actions speak louder than words and he was going to show you action. Well, to me, I'm sorry, it's just a lot of lip service, okay? It means absolutely nothing to me. And in 48 hours since this has all been going down with these apology videos, I've seen no action from David Dobrik other than ass saving on videos, saying I'm sorry over and over and over again, gaslighting people and manipulating emotionally his audience, okay? So that's what I have witnessed from David Dobrik and what he has done in the last 48 hours. And this is coming from somebody that's not real invested in David Dobrik, all right? So if I can sit on the outside and see that, I'm not really sure how his stands can't see that. I'm just saying, okay? So he goes in and he says, I'm not, I'm just going to show you guys action. Then he comes out in the second video, right? And he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now people are starting to accept this. But he also says in the video that I'm going to be taking a break from social media. But I am going to come back. This is the important part. That part, forget it. It doesn't matter. This I'm going to take a break from social media part. That really doesn't matter because he can take a break whether he announces it or not. What he's saying there is, just don't expect to see me around because I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going and hanging out with my friends and drinking Starbucks and you know probably I don't know pranking each other behind the scenes and buying some ginormous uh, bed again and you know I'll probably be traveling a little bit so I'll be off of social media so you won't see me. Okay, that's what that was about. The next part was what was important and that was when he said, but I will be back because this is what I love to do. This is the mistake that. Shane Dawson made, okay? Shane Dawson did not say if he was going to come back, and he didn't say he was going to take a break, or, I mean, he said he was going to take a break, but he didn't say if he was going to come back afterwards. David Dobrik knows not to make that mistake, because everybody has been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to see what Shane Dawson's going to do, okay? And Shane Dawson is continuing to lose, fa lose favor, but David Dobrik said, I'm going to show you that I've made changes, and I will be back, and when he comes back, no, and people are speculating that he's going to do some documentary about all this. No, he won't, and that would be, if he does, and maybe I don't know, because I said he wouldn't come out in an apology video, and he did, so if he comes out with some stupid documentary, he's really going to be screwing himself, okay? He'll come back, and he'll be doing something completely different, but here's the thing, okay? Number one, I don't understand how he can come back from this on his channel doing the same thing he did before because his channel is completely built on pranks, correct? You know, which the other question to me that I have is, and maybe I'm wrong, but I watch a lot of pranks on TikTok. I watch a lot of couples that prank and things like that. When you prank somebody, it's completely unknown to them that you're about to do that, correct? How do you ever ask somebody for consent before you prank them? I, that's a question that I am very confused about with this whole situation is how do you ever prank somebody and ask their consent first? I, or it, and he's also saying before he puts the video up, okay? So I would think that the entire condition of his channel would change because how would he continue to do these videos? I mean, he has to change the entirety of his videos now. So what's he going to do? We're just going to see David Dobrik vlog about his boring life? Who'd care, right? I mean, maybe some people would. I don't know. But that's not what David Dobrik is known for, okay? So now we have video number one and we have video number two, okay? And now we're going to have this break that's going to occur. And what's going to happen is he's going to come back and he's not going to do anything. He's not going to take any, you know, real look at himself. He's not going to do any therapy or counseling on himself. He's not going to, like, work on himself. He's not going to do any inventory or evaluation. He's not going to really try to improve himself, okay? I didn't hear him say any of that in the videos. I didn't hear him say that that was his plan. All I heard him say was, I'm sorry, when, you come, when I come back, you'll see that I'm a different person. Okay, right? So this is what happens. So he leaves. And we've seen this witness in the past by other, you know, influencers. And Trisha Paytas, when I was watching, uh, when I was watching the Front of Me's podcast, she was just talking about this. She said, but people make these apology videos and they continue to continue to go on and work and work and work. And this is the reason why. David Dobrik won't change, okay? But he won't change internally as a person inside. So when he comes back, David Dobrik will continue to make the same mistakes, right? But people won't hold him in the same regard because at that point, the people that are already done with David will have already left. The people that have remained are the people that accept that apology. Those are that 431,000 people. That's his audience he's talking to. David Dobrik knows that. David Dobrik knows that when he's coming back, he's going to be talking to that 431,000 people that have accepted his apology and said, hey, we love you anyway. It's okay. That's his new audience. David Dobrik has just developed a new audience on YouTube.
Because he doesn't have any plans to go off and change. And this is what happens is these people, they do all this save their career kind of stuff. They get on video and it's about, you know, like, I got to fix this to save my career. I got to fix this so sponsors want to invest in me in the future. I've got to do this so that people aren't mad at me anymore. But they never work on the internal change because if they did, okay, if they did, like Manny MUA, who actually did some real work, you would see it, okay? You would see when they came back, you would be able to witness this person is different. This person isn't the same person that they were before. Something has fundamentally changed within themselves, okay? That they aren't the same person anymore. And I can get back online and I can support that person. But how you're going to get in a comment or in a Twitter thread after two days and accept somebody's genuine, I'm sorry, apology and say that they think that they've, they're making genuine changes... You wouldn't accept that with a guy that you dated or a girl that you dated that had screwed you over, let alone David Dobrik online, who has hurt people. Like, I don't understand that. Can somebody explain that to me, please? I am so confused by this, okay? Now I want to talk about this I'm sorry situation that was in this video a little bit. You know, my father taught me when I was growing up. He got, especially as a person in recovery, because, you know, I would drink and use other, other substances and I would mess up and get in trouble and all this kind of stuff, right? I don't have a pretty history when it comes to drugs and alcohol, and y'all know that. That's why I got sober when I was 22 and a half, okay? My father hated when I said the words, I'm sorry. It's too, and he literally cannot stand those words to this day, right? And he would say to me, don't ever say those words to me because when you say I'm sorry, what you said was, forget what I just did. You just want me to forget what you just did. There's no accountability. There's no taking amends. There's no saying because this is, this is what an amends is, okay? An amends is looking at somebody and saying, I am sorry that I harmed you. I, I don't know about all these people, but I, solely alone, am responsible for harming you. And this is what I did. Let me explain to you what I did so that you know that I know what I did. Because if I can't explain it to you, then you don't know if I know, right? And it's important that I know. So this is what I did, and now I take responsibility for it. And I'm gonna make it right, and the way that I'm gonna make it right is by showing you in the future that I'm not gonna do it again. And then you ask that person, what can I do to make it right for you? Are there other things that I can do? And that person might look at you and say, there is nothing that you need to do. I really appreciate you working on this and I wish you the best. Or that person might say, piss off. I don't ever want to see you again. I don't accept your amends. I don't accept your whatever you have to say, whatever. And it's for you. And you know why it's for you? It's not for you to save brand deals. It's not for you to save subscriber counts. It's not for you to do this and to do that and put money in your pocket. It's for you to grow as a human being. Because until we start taking responsibility and act for our actions, we can't grow as human beings. And until we grow as human beings, we don't change. And if we don't change, then those things that we did before are going to happen again. So when I sit here and I will look at David Dobrik and this sad ass apology video where he just says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I'm waiting for is for it to happen again because I don't see any growth and any change. And that's just my two cents about all of this. It's sad, it's sad to me, you know? And let me tell you this thing that's the saddest about all of this is, in the matter of only three years, okay? What, 900 days, not a thousand days? In the matter of a thousand days from when, I mean, we're talking about Dramageddon 1. I remember, I, it, was, it was August, the week of August 25th, because it's my anniversary. I was in Las Vegas, Nevada, so it's been, it's coming up on, it'll be three years that this all happened, right? That we saw, like, just a complete breakdown, right, of major influencers. Well, we have come three years around, and yes, I know David Dobrik is not in the beauty influencer community, and that was in the beauty influencer community, but that was really the start of a lot of influencers being held to some uh, sort of accountability, right? What's interesting to me is that I don't think that it is... Um, I, I don't think that it is out of question to say that in the world that we live in today in 2021, people are a lot more sensitive to social issues, which they should be, okay? The same jokes that were funny 10 years ago to some people are not funny today, right? Well, what's interesting to me about that is that as an audience on YouTube and social media, we've almost become more accepting of harsher things and allowing people to continue to exist even though the things that they're being held accountable for 
are a hundred times more serious than the things that we were talking about three or four years ago. And I don't understand that. It's very, very confusing to me. And as somebody that has grown and is older, and I, I, I see that things just get worse sometimes with time, it makes me wonder where are we going to be in three years? Are these going to be things that are acceptable? Are these going to be things that people just think are okay? It just, it breaks my heart, you know? And I'm not telling you that you have to unfollow these people. I'm not telling you that you have to stop watching their videos or putting money in their pockets or buying their products. You do exactly what you want to do. But at least sit there and ask the questions, you know? When I was growing up and I was in high school, I was very, very punk rock and different. And I know that that's probably hard to believe today, but I was. And we had a saying back then, and that saying was question authority. Because maybe the rules and the things that were put in place, you know, maybe the, the, the reasons why things were the way that they were, okay, were, were there for a reason. But maybe they needed to be questioned too, you know. And a lot of things have changed in the last 30 years since I've graduated from high school. And things will continue to change over the times as you guys grow and as I grow and when I'm not even here anymore, right? But when you're continuing to support an influencer, ask yourself, why am I supporting this person? Or should I be questioning them? Should I be asking important questions about why I'm supporting them? And asking yourself, why do I continue to support somebody that's problematic over somebody that is actually a blessing to the world? Anyway, that's all I have to say. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.